Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Special Hobby. So this model comes in a 170 second scale and it copies short Sunderland MCAR or Mark 1, 2, so called fine porcupine and we have a commercial sample here so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review. So it will be interesting to check what is actually supplied in this kit because it's a new version of this aircraft which was originally released in 2020 I think or even 2019 as far as I can see. So now we have a new version with new markings and parts and this is a commercial sample so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review and first of all I have to note the box art here it looks quite nice and it would be cool to get the same poster but unfortunately Special Hobby does not make any posters as far as I know and the box size is typical for such kit it's the same as the previous versions so here you can see comparison with my hand and by the way you can find previous versions video reviews on our YouTube channel as well so Let's flip it over here, you can see also information that it's made in Czech Republic and also kit number. So kit number is SH72438 and this is a top opening box so it should be quite quick to open and here is what we have inside. So there is plenty of space inside but you can see that parts count is also quite big and aircraft itself won't, will be big so do not be fooled by the let's say scale of this aircraft it's still a big build to work on and here we have first plastic bag there are three of them in total so i'm going to open it right now and we will check everything together so just give me a moment and it's a resealable plastic bag so that's why it's more or less quick and first of all i would like to start with 3d printed parts as far as you can see these are propeller hubs so here are the R, maybe I'll zoom in a bit so that you can see it a bit closer. But overall casting or printing quality looks quite nice. So it's just a matter of careful installation on your model. Next we also have some resin accessories. So those are the exhaust stacks which will be used on both engines. Do not forget that we are working with a twin engine aircraft here. And here are the R. So as you can see these parts look fine, it's just a matter of careful installation and maybe painting and weathering so that they will look natural and that would be a really good addition. And even in 170 second scale such things should be noticeable because it's a bit tough um, to copy in a plastic, but here we get it copied in a resin, so no worries about it. Next we open bag which was in the first bag so here we have all the clear parts and as you can see it looks quite fine we have really good molding quality here but as far as i remember special hobby does not include any um, mask templates for their models so i would rather suggest to find aftermarket release which will cover all these tiny squares because otherwise it will be a bit problematic for some models and of course it's better to save some time for painting your model then just cutting all the stickers and applying them on clear parts. So now we start with a grey plastic sprue. The first one is dedicated to engine gondolas parts. We have propellers, two versions of them and actually we have four engine aircraft, right? So that's why we have four now, propeller is not two versions. We also have the front cooling sections which are divided into two halves. And I can see that cooling flaps are pre-molded so you won't be able to get them in different positions from what I can understand. And overall molding quality seems to be nice but be sure to follow the instructions and of course be careful while joining all these halves together because there are no guiding pins whatsoever. So you will be on your own trying to align all these parts together. Next we continue with another grey plastic sprue. So here the most notable thing is that there are interior or cockpit parts in this kit. Even though this is a 170 second scale build it should be nicely detailed inside. So it might be worth thinking how to expose all this stuff because it would be a shame to hide it just by closing all the doors and closing all the let's say possible 
openings on this aircraft and note that we have the clear windows for this aircraft it will be visible through them but i think that's not enough in order to present all the interior features which are supplied out of the box and as you can see pre-molded features look great it's also a good opportunity to play with some washes and maybe weathering maybe shading in order to bring out these features next we continue with large fuselage panels so here the most important part is not to overdo the paint and primer layers so as you can see these panel lines are not that deep and it will be really easy to get them lost under several layers of primer and paint that's why i'm emphasizing the importance of following the overall paint process and here we also have the instrument panel which hooks quite simple but again you can get some aftermarket sets pe sets which will be actually upgrading this thing and one more bag comes with a bigger plastic part so here it is as you can see we have already fuselage parts and wing parts and as you remember i said that the finished model will be quite big even in a i mean considering that we are dealing with a 170 second scale kit but what i wanted to say that even in the bigger scales we get the smaller models than this one so that's something to remember, especially when you look at this fuselage half. So here is comparison with my hand. They are huge. We have also recessed panel lines just like what we saw before, but here they are somewhat deeper. So maybe it will be a bit more resistant to the overall coverage by the layers, but still it's better to be careful than to be sorry. And here inside we also get some features, which is a notable thing, but note that we do not have any guiding elements. The only things which I can see is the large tabs in the nose area, and that's pretty much all. And maybe another thing to note is that we have the nose section pre-molded, so you have to be careful while joining all this stuff together, and of course the tail surfaces they are molded separately and they will have to be glued one by one okay next we continue with the wing parts these ones are even bigger which is no surprise for a naval aircraft but here you can see comparison in my hand so each side of the wing should be glued out of two holes we also have wing mechanization pre-molded again it's rather surprising in this the size of the model not the scale but the size but i guess it was necessary in order to preserve the costs in let's say uh, tolerable <laughs> dimensions what i'm also a bit struggling to understand is uh, uh, this large tabs so they will be handy for overall fitment of the aircraft but you have to somehow uh, slide them into the fuselage so pay attention while doing this and of course inside we do not get any guiding pins whatsoever so this will be a lot of fun especially if you remember the size of these models uh, do not forget to remove this pins in some areas because they might be influencing the overall fitment so it's better to dry fit first and then to glue everything together and then we go on with another plastic sprue so here is pretty much the same set of parts nothing surprising or different but again i would rather search for maybe some aftermarket release aftermarket pu let's say which will be uh, fixing the problem of the molded in flaps in my opinion this is really important in such big model okay so we move this one aside there is a third plastic bag and here we continue with the uh, first type of the sprue i think this one is supplied in two identical frames or not no i was fooled by this landing gear wheels but actually there are two different uh, sprues you can see that each wheel should be glued out of two halves so be ready for that and of course if you have a chance to get aftermarket upgrade i think cmk actually makes the resin wheels upgrade for this kit which should look better in the finished state especially if you are striving to get the more detailed model in a 170 second scale but overall molding quality as you can see really good it's a 170 second scale and it's visible on the interior parts so here nothing changes even though the aircraft itself is quite big 
next we continue with more of different parts for the interior so again it's really, really nice to get all these things out of the box you don't have to get some aftermarket you just have to build them together paint them properly and maybe expose them somehow so that it won't be done in vain but that's pretty much all you have to do and note that on the landing gear wheels surprisingly we have the guiding elements so maybe it will be handy for some others who knows Next we continue with the bombs and also some parts for the tail area. So yes, bombs are included, you will be placing them on the bomb brakes obviously. And of course you don't have to use all of them, so maybe you can get some of them for your spare parts box, who knows. Some modellers like to do this because it's always handy in uh, different builds later. Next we continue with another plastic sprue, this one is dedicated to interior parts, so here I will have to zoom in and here you can check it. So I guess that's internal weather which will be connecting several floors inside, as you remember this aircraft had several floors. And then we have two plastic sprues for the engines. So these engines are looking rather good, I mean these are plastic parts but they still look impressive for the standard bonus and of course you can also add some wiring maybe so that it will look even better once finished. And then there is a uh, one more plastic bag with decal sheet which is rather small, <laughs> I was expecting a bigger one but I guess special hobby managed to fit all the necessary symbols here so that's why they did not need anything bigger and i will show it in a second just give me a moment so here it is it's written that it's printed in czech republic so i guess edward was helping them but as you can see printing quality is really nice we also have some decals for the instrument panel for the position lights for some stencils so everything looks good obviously professional modelers can also try to replicate roundels with masks but it's already your decision whether you would like to go to such lengths maybe you are fine with decals and with careful application it should also look good next we continue with assembly manual so this one is printed in form of large brochure we have short history note in czech and english then we continue with the parts map so unused parts are marked with a cross so pay attention you will have to use the right version of the parts in some cases we get several types of the same parts so that's why it's important to check twice whether you are using the right version of this or that element next we continue or we start with the assembly of the cockpit so here straight away you have to paint the parts in necessary shades or colors because otherwise you won't be able to reach them and uh, keep it in mind and also plan accordingly because it will also influence the overall perception of the aircraft the front cockpit or the pilot workspace let's say it will be visible through the canopy so that's why i would rather spend some time trying to add more elements here and then we continue with all the internal elements so as you can see various uh, seats ladders and also you can see that the original fuselage will have to be modified you will have to send down the original pre-molded features and install the new part and of course also to drill some holes in order to get some side panels on the outer fuselage and here you can see the installation of the interior so as, it is, as I said before and as you can see we have several floors we have the bomb bay here and it looks quite impressive for a 170 second scale model so that's why I was saying it's a good idea to expose it somehow, maybe to do some cutouts in the fuselage, maybe to open all the possible doors and hatches, who knows. Next we continue by installing the separate fuselage panels, we also start building the tail surfaces, as you remember they were separate. Here we install wings and engine gondolas on wings and also bombs, as far as you can see they will be just installed on the underwing wrecks. Here we assemble the turret, which will be installed in the tail and in the nose area. And these two are also a good opportunity to play with a bit of weathering inside. Here you can see the propellers installation, so again the parts choice will depend on the marking option, so I would recommend to get some references so that you can understand what you have to do. Note that we also have the landing gear here 
but again as far as you can see it's more of an option if you would like to use it and for the uh, side connections or the uh, tensioners you will have to use your own wire which is not supplied in the box next we continue with more parts these are antennas and also yeah these are pretty much antennas on the wings on the fuselage so a lot of stuff to attach and then we start with the marking guide so here you can see two marking guides in a typical royal air forces schemes here are another two versions in uh, slightly different camouflage combinations and of course we have some advertisements for a 170 second scale kits from special hobby we reviewed them all so you can find it easily on our youtube channel as for this kit it should be already available and you can get it on special hobby website i will be happy to hear your opinion about such a list do not forget to write it here in the comment section below if you like this video press the like button subscribe to our youtube channel and i will see you in the next video review as usual thank you for joining me today and bye